venerable religious, and dear parishioners. As we know, it's, for most people, today is Resolution Day. We begin the new year, there's that feeling of freshness, new opportunity, I need to do certain things or certain changes I have to make in my life, so we have our New Year's resolutions. But unfortunately, New Year's resolutions almost is a punchline. You know, they don't last very long. It's lasted as long as one of my New Year resolutions. And that speaks to the fact that we have that fallen human nature where we are weighed down, where we are pulled down by spiritual gravity. We are pulled down by old habits. We're pulled down by just the difficulty of trying. But nevertheless, even though people make jokes about, no, I didn't make, keep my New Year's resolutions, nevertheless, it doesn't change the fact that we need to make resolutions. It doesn't matter, in other words, how many times we failed. What matters is that we keep making good resolutions. I think one of the most powerful uh, statements from the imitation of Christ, and would you know it, I forgot to bring the exact quote here, but anyway, I'll try to remember it. It's, a, it's to the effect that if he who often resolves will fail, how much more will he fail who does not resolve? So there you have it. The perfect answer, I think, to that objection. Why should I make a resolution? Because I've failed so many times. Oh, what is that, by the way? That's the voice of discouragement. It's the devil's ultimate tool. Don't make a good resolution because you, <clears throat> excuse me, because you fail to keep it so often. Don't listen to the devil. We have a natural discouragement from failure. Why try? Because you know, look at, the, look at the past, but the devil will always capitalize on that discouragement. He'll make it worse. He, it's, it's been actually called the ultimate tool of the devil. There's that story of the devil going out of business, decided to go out of business one day, and he's selling his various tools. He's selling pride. He's selling lust. He's selling gluttony. He's selling this tool and that tool to bring people down. But there's one little tool on the corner, and somebody says, well, I, don't, I want to buy that. And he says, well, that's not for sale. Well, what is it? He said, it's the tool of discouragement. And the devil said, the reason I'm not selling it is because if I ever wanted to go back into business, that's the only tool I would ever need to get started again. So absolutely make it a resolution day. And I'd like to share with you some practical tips on, res on keeping resolutions. Be honest. It's not easy to be honest with ourselves because we tend to look at ourselves in, well, we don't have always the best view of ourselves. Sometimes we overdo it or sometimes we underdo it, but just be honest with ourselves. Be humble to admit our weaknesses. And humility and honesty, they go hand in hand. So definitely we want to have that honest, humble look at ourselves. Number two, be specific. It's not enough to say, I need to be more humble, or I need to be more charitable. I need to be more prayerful. The problem with a generalized resolution like that is it, how do you do it? You, you will fail very, very soon because it's not specific enough. We have to, well, let me put it this way. 
uh, you need to zero in on a situation. For example, if it's humility that we need to practice, you need to zero in on a situation where you need to practice humility and resolve to improve in that one resolution or in that one situation. So as a general rule, the broader it is, the more general it is, the less chance of success. But the more specific it is, the more concrete I will, I will do this when such and such happens. Now, there's much more of a chance of success. Also, it reminds me of a tip from the Franklin, from the Franklin Covey planning philosophy. And I thought this was very interesting. It says, don't put resolutions in the future tense. Put it in the present tense. Instead of saying, I will do such and such. Or we can even say, I will pray the rosary every day. The, the point is, say, I, pr I pray the rosary every day. See, that seems to give it more immediacy, more specific specificity, more concreteness. I'm doing it right now. See, the tendency is with that future tense, well, I'll pray the rosary every day. Well, that could happen a year from now or five years from now. But if we say, I pray the rosary every day, well, that means today is the day it will be happening. Be simple with our resolutions and don't try to have many of them. Again, if we make too many of them or we make them too complicated, less chance of success. So simple and few. Better to do a few or even one or two than to try to do many because then we're diluting our efforts. Be consistent. It is far better to do something small every day to improve on one key point than to make a big resolution that you cannot keep for more than a week or two. Slow and steady wins the race. One more great suggestion, write it down. That's very powerful because we can we go back to that time after time you know we can forget our memory of something can fade but every so often you pull it out and there it is looking at you right in the face i wrote this down very powerful you know there's a, a saying about pontius pilate who was weak and vacillating and giving in to the jews who wanted to have the death of Jesus. And so he weakly gives in. He says, I'm innocent of his blood. He washes his hands. Of course, he's not washing away his horrible responsibility and guilt. But there is one time when he did stand up to them unequivocally. The, the Jewish people, the leaders, did not like the sign that he commanded to be put above Jesus when he was crucified. It was in three languages, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. They didn't like it. They went to Pilate and said, change it to he said he was the King of the Jews, but he's not our King. And Pilate all of a sudden found his backbone. <laughs> what I have written I have written. He stood up to them. The power of something was put down in writing. So put your resolutions down in, in writing for the year. And again, the, the chances, the, the, yes, the chances of keeping it will indeed be more powerful. I wanted to also share some quotes from somebody who is not a saint and sad to say for most of his life he wasn't even a believer in God. But nevertheless, we can take an idea from him 
and I'm talking about Thomas Edison. Yes, the one who invented the light bulb, and that's why we can see in the dark using electricity. He was quite the inventor. Many things he invented. But the point, what I wanted to share with you is in doing some, uh, an internet search on some of his sayings, I was amazed how many times he kept saying, keep trying, don't give up. Keep trying, don't give up. Keep trying, don't give up. And he would know because he invented thousands of things that did not work. In other words, the man had a right to be discouraged. But he refused to be discouraged. And that's the lesson that I want to share with you. We can definitely use this in our spiritual life. I, I hope that the man came to believe in God and converted to the Catholic faith before he died. I don't know what, what that was like. But as I said, we can take these ideas. And I want to share some of these quotes that he said about always, always trying. We often miss opportunity because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. Yes, it's not easy, but it's not supposed to be easy. Put your overalls on, so to speak, and keep going, getting to work. Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. If we all did the things we are capable of, we would astound ourselves. When you have exhausted all possibilities, remember this, you haven't. Our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is to try just one more time. He said it's our greatest weakness. We give up. Negative results are just what I want. They're just as valuable to me as positive results. I can never find the thing that does the job best until I find the ones that don't. And then, by the way, he was asked one time, how many things have you invented, Thomas, Edis, the, Thomas that did not work? He said, well, I think about 10,000 things. And the person said, aren't you discouraged? And he said, no. Not that he purposely went out and invented things that didn't work. No, he found them out. But he said, I have not failed. I, it's just I found 10,000 ways that don't work. So make good resolutions. Never give up. Always keep trying. If anybody grades on the effort, it's God. And that's what he will hold us accountable for. He will not even look at our success primarily, I believe. I think he will look at how hard did you try. Let us be inspired on this first day of the year, the octave day of Christmas. Let us be inspired by our divine infant who is already... making the effort, to say the least, in redeeming us, fulfilling his role. We see Our Lady and St. Joseph, them too, putting forth the effort. Let us be inspired by their effort to do the holy will of God, to do the holy will of God in our lives, and to try to keep becoming the saints that God wants of us. Again, Merry Christmas and a happy and a holy new year to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.